Boy, you grots look a little down. Mm. Well, I got something that'll cheer you up. Mm. Ready? Go. Yo, check those threads out. We got that drip. Welcome back to the Red Ones Go Fast Time. I'm Old Big Mac, and as you saw by the grots, we do indeed have new threads. Check them out. Classic. The Red Ones. They go faster. <laughs> That's right. The amazing artwork that we had done by Velgarn is now available on shirts. And obviously, like you saw, grot sizes, which is one of the most important things to Old Big Mac here. Uh, basically, there's a lot of Warhammer stuff out there. There's a lot of stuff uh, that the kids are into. There's not a lot of Warhammer stuff in the kid sizes. <laughs> so it's really kind of, uh, uh, you know, a, a faff to get them anything. I think the last shirt that GW themselves did was the uh, Red Gabo on Bounces shirt from Christmas 2021, right? No, two, 2022. That was the last time they did a shirt that came in a kid size. Uh, so yeah, like for me, like making sure we had the grot sizes was really important. As you saw, there are grot tees and, uh, hoodies. There's also long sleeve shirts and some other things like that. Um, couple of notes. You'll notice that there was some red ones go faster that weren't on red shirts. I do offer them in multiple colors. Strangely, kid shirts don't come in red. I know it's weird. Uh, but you know, we're working with the supplier with Teespring, seeing how things work out so far. So good. Everyone's been happy with quality and stuff. Um, but that is one of the weird ones. You can get the hoodie in red, but not the t-shirt. Um, they keep trying to push white. What kid wears white? I mean, come on anyways, but yeah, links down in the description below to our Teespring account, or there might be a thing up there too. Uh, but basically we've got all the red ones go fasta and of course our original red squig, insert logo there <laughs> red squig designs as well uh and i'll probably maybe do a uh, discount code for this so if that's something that you're thinking about doing shoot me a message down below and uh, i'll let you know what it is all right enough faffing about it's time to get serious with this video and that's because our balance data sleet is finally here meta watch finally gave us what they've been promising for weeks now and our first uh real good big update for 2024 for the rules for 10th edition warhammer 40k now i know what you're saying big mech we play orcs we don't give a crap about tournaments why does this matter because the balance data slate isn't just about tournaments. Yes, that's where their data comes from, but they also look at the balance of the gameplay itself. And so importantly, when they do these, not only do you get the balance data slate update uh, as far as like nerfing some rules, you also get bringing some up. So, you know, those armies that are down in the dumps as far as win rates go, they help make them better. They also adjust all the points. And most importantly, they adjust the rules of the game with the rules commentary. And that's like the biggest deal, especially for us players that don't necessarily go to tournaments all the time. Because there's a lot of rules interactions that we probably don't get right. Or, you know, I'll think it's one way and you'll think it's the other way and we'll just roll the dice and then keep playing the game. This is where GW finally comes in and goes, oh, hey, this is actually what we meant to write the whole time. So we're going to go over each and every one of those things right now. So first of all, you can find all of these items uh, at WarhammerCommunity.com. That's where they post everything. They have a little download section. They also have them in the Warhammer 40K app, which is something we're going to talk about more at the end of this because after the balanced data slate, GW actually did a huge update to the app, and we should definitely talk about that. But anyways, you can go to Warhammer Community, download these Read them yourself, look at them. They are completely free. It's one of the great things that they do with the rules is making sure everybody has the updates. Now, the uh, core rules on the balance data slate got updated again. Devastating wounds they're still having a hard time with. When 10th edition dropped, devastating wounds were way too freaking strong. They reined them back in and they're still too strong. It is just all sorts of stuff going on with devastating wounds. Basically, it breaks the game, right? The whole point of the game is you need to have a strong enough weapon to actually hurt something and get through its armor, right? But if you make it where 
none of the armor can work against it. What's the point of taking anything with armor, right? It just breaks it. Uh, so what they've done is devastating wounds. Um, if it scores a critical wound, no saving throw of any kind can be used against that attack, including invulnerables. However, what they've done is they've said that such attacks are only allocated to models after all other attacks made by the attacking unit have been allocated and resolved. So you got to do all of your regular wounds first, all your devastating wounds, and then you go to the critical wound at the end. Um, that's interesting. A lot of tournament players, when they're allocating wounds on a unit, they will allocate wounds to, you know, the junk in the squad uh, until you get down to, you know, the leader, the special weapon, or whatever is left that they really want to protect. This makes them have to like, oh, maybe I should throw a couple of saving throws on the leader guy here, because uh, if I don't, and he's the only one left, then this critical wound's going to go right through, and I'm screwed, which I kind of like. But I also don't like, because you can end up with, well, you know, I've allocated all my wounds, and now I've got, you know, this, this block of, of infantry, you know, whatever, that's got multiple wounds. I've got one dude that's got one wound on him, and then, you know, three that are healthy, and you've got this critical wound that would do, you know, however many wounds of damage that would, that would like, maybe outright kill a guy, and he just throws it on the dude with one wound left. So I, I, I don't know. Uh, I still think devastating wounds kind of breaks the game. I wish it wasn't a rule, to be honest. Um, you know, exploding sixes on the hit, that's fine. Like, you still have to roll the wound. Your opponent still gets to roll their armor save. Like, it doesn't break the game. This devastating wounds where it actually just ignores all armor. It's just not a good rule. Anyways, uh, moving on. Um, they had some stuff on modifying a stratagem CP cost. Uh, really what they did is they added in a couple of examples just so you knew what they were talking about. Uh, pretty simple there. Um, Fire Overwatch has gotten uh, some clarifications to it. Now the unit firing the Overwatch has to be able to actually see what it's shooting at which, duh, that kind of should have been there all the time. However, there's a new restriction which is really interesting, and that's you cannot target a Titanic unit with the stratagem. Hmm. That means if I charge old big Stompy right there into combat and you want to overwatch, you can't overwatch him. Interesting. Moving along, Insane Bravery has now been restricted to once per battle, which is fine. You really shouldn't be using that more than once per battle anyway. Um, they changed some of the visibility things again. Again, there's been some, some base rules that have just been clunky. Visibility, especially with towering models, has been one of them, uh, especially with how they interact with runes. They've now said that towering models that are within the terrain feature can also see out of it normally. So if you can get your towering model inside the whole terrain piece, then it can see out of it instead of still being blocked. They're trying to make it make more sense, which is a good thing. Anyways, that was all of the, the regular basic rules. Then they go into faction rules, which is cool. So like Adeptus Soriatus now get two acts of faith per phase. Uh, Adeptus Custodes, they've got um, a feel no pain against critical wounds um, that are caused by the devastating wounds. So again, breaks the game, but then certain factions still get a save anyway. They just call it feel no pain instead of a save. It's kind of dumb. Um, Eldari got nerfed and I'm going to say this as an old Ari player. You see, I've got some of it down there. Um, I've been into Craft Worlds since second edition. I think Craft Worlds are awesome. I, I don't really like Harlequins. I did play Dark Eldar real big in, in fourth and fifth, but uh, got rid of it before sixth. And uh, Drakari, okay, but you know, not my thing. And honestly, Dark Eldar weren't my thing either. They were just cheap, and I was poor, and that's what I could afford. Um, but Craft World Eldar to me are cool, always will be cool. I hate that they've been so overpowered. I literally have not touched my Eldar since 10th edition started. I don't want to be part of that. I don't want people to feel like they're going to play some overpowered army. I don't have any of the meta stuff anyway. I've got like a squad of each of the uh, the different aspect warriors because I think they're cool. Uh, and some guardians and some falcons. Like, uh, that's my army. So anytime there's an army that gets OP, I just back off of using it which is one of the great things about having multiple armies is that you could choose to like ah nah you know i'm not i'm not going to be a part of this um but yeah again as an eldar player eldari still needed this like it, it's just too dang strong again game breaking i'm gonna have this pool of dice that are just sixes or whatever i need that i could just pick out anytime you'd lose all of the um kind of random not randomness but you know what i mean like there's a um a certain amount of unknown 
when you're playing a game of Warhammer that's really cool, that helps you really feel immersed and like you're in a real battlefield because, you know, the best laid plans don't always work, right? But there are different ways that you can kind of increase or decrease your odds. This was just straight up, nah, just we're going to make it work. Like, that nah, wasn't cool. So anyways, they got brought it down to six dice, which is way better. Uh, and then... Um, yeah, did a couple other things. Night Spinners got nerfed a little bit. So now Eldari will probably finally be below that way above 55% win rate on major tournaments. And, and this is the hard thing for me about like balanced data slate. Everybody looks at, like the win loss right here. They go, oh, yeah, they're only 56%. That's a 56% win rate in competitive tournament play. If you were to go local game store play, if you were to look at like casual play, they're way higher than that. Because even people that, you know, aren't trying to be OP, that aren't trying to be meta players, they can't help it. You go and play and like, oh yeah, I got like these 12 dice that are all sixes that I could just use whatever. Like, you can't fight against that. It's not fair. So, you know, really these things, ah, yeah, they just, they get so much more skewed when you look at like the real game that us normal people play. Anyways, moving on. Uh, Agents of the Imperium um, got a couple of updates on the numbers of things. Astra Militarum. Okay, a lot of you know, um, although Orcs are my main, uh, Imperial Guard are my second army. I love them to death. I've had them forever. I've got Valhallans that are old school. Um, this was needed because Astra Militarum have been clunky with how they work and how the officers can issue orders and stuff. So now it's... Uh, officers can, with the voice of command, um, can issue orders at the end of the phase in which they disembark from the transport or were set up on the battlefield. So if you've got some sort of rule that sets them up on a battlefield, if you've got, uh, you know, they get out of a chimera or whatever, just any time they get set up on the battlefield, they could still issue an order. And that's really good. It's something that they needed because otherwise what was happening is you'd have your command squad on a chimera, drive around the battlefield, they get out, they still can't issue an order, they get charged, killed, whatever, you haven't done anything all game. So being able to get out of the chimera and go, hey, everybody fire my position, uh, you know, it just, it works. It works and it's something that'll make the army work because um, their orders really aren't, you know, overpowered or anything like that. So uh, that's a good change. Um, Blood Angels got a little bit of changes. Chaos Demons got a little bit of changes. Um, the, the Chaos Demons I like, that it it's it makes whatever your chosen uh, Chaos God is, it makes uh, those units battle line. So, you know, if you are uh, corn, then anything corn can become battle line. Um, you know, so you'd use all the little corn demons. That's pretty cool. Uh, Chaos Space Marines got a couple things. Death Guard, uh, they got a big change on the um, Biologist Putrefire. Uh, it was a little bit OP. Um, so they, they tone that down. Um, lots of keyword uh, still refining, which is a big thing that I've been calling out on this channel since 10th edition dropped. You guys all saw my, my crazy videos on Mega Armor not having a keyword on anything. Uh, so yeah, they're still trying to get all of those uh, you know leveled out. Uh, but yeah, basically every army kind of got touched a little bit, got something change to it, added to it, uh, clarified with it. Um, things like Space Wolves, their detachment rule, um, making sure it's the end of each player's turn and not just their turn, right? Because it, it doesn't work if you were going uh, first or something like that, right? So making sure that like the, the rules actually work how they're supposed to. Um, and yeah, that is everything that was in the balance data slate itself. Now, interestingly, Games Workshop within the article themselves uh, announced that Drukari were one of the forces that were really just not doing well. And so they gave them a new uh, detachment, which of course is the new like um, kind of army wide rules that you can do with like how you set up your army as far as like what units you could take, what their power ups are, things like that. Um, and I thought that was actually really interesting. Um, that they would do that, that they would actually give them a whole new detachment outside of the codex, outside of the index, just drop a, hey, here's a detachment, see how that works. I like that, I really do, uh, especially a lot of these detachments are getting very flavorful, and so you're getting a lot of the flavor of the armies back in. Um, 
so yeah giving them a, an attachment where they can really come in and assault where archons can hire incubi bodyguards like it was a really cool update so i i look forward to them doing that more there were definitely a couple more armies that were just as down in the dumps as drukari that could have used a new detachment but yeah we'll uh we'll see what they do with that all right, moving on, the second uh, piece of information they give you is the Munitorium Field Manual, which is just an updating of the points. One change that they've done to this that I really like, because it used to be this big race, you'd get the, the, the update, and then you'd have to go get the last update and put them side by side and like do math to figure out what went up and what went down in points. Um, now they just tell you, when you look at it now, there is a red line with an up if your points went up and a green line with a down if your points went down. I mean, this just makes so much more sense. Like, oh, yeah, look, green down, green down. You know, you, that one didn't get touched because they just had their uh, codex. Oh, red up, red up. You know, like it just at a glance, you can tell what is different which is so much nicer than before. Now, as far as those points changes themselves, there's gonna be a ton of channels and a ton of Facebook groups and things like that uh, on each individual specific army that are gonna like really be able to tell you whether or not those changes were like good or bad or super OP or whatever. Um, I don't play every army. I don't follow every army. I, I can't possibly, uh, you know, I'm not like Auspex Tactics. I, I can't sit there and dedicate that much time to figuring this out, letting you know like what was good, what was bad, whatever. Um, what I do see though, looking back and looking at the forest for the trees, things like Adeptus Soriatus, right? They got a bunch of updates that you saw. There were a bunch that went up in price and a bunch that went down in price. And so they really are looking to like keep that army on the level. That's telling us their codex is still a ways out. Uh, they needed the help to, to make sure things were even. Um, Custodes, even though their codex is soon, got a bunch of drops because even though their codex is coming soon, they were like Drukhari. Their win rates were just garbage. They just, they were too much points for everything. And so it's really trying to bring things down so you can get enough bodies on the board to actually be able to battle. Uh, Adeptus Mechanicus just got their codex, just got their points update. Everything stayed the same with them. Eldari had a couple of those increases that they really needed, um, stuff like that. Interestingly, uh, Agents of the Imperium got nothing, no changes. Might have just been because they didn't need them, maybe, I don't know. Um, Astra Militarum only got one increase, and that was the Manticore, which is, I, I think, their last um, indirect fire thing left that didn't already get uh, bumped like that. So that was interesting because they're kind of far away from theirs. Um, Blood Angels also didn't get anything at all. And that one's really weird because Blood Angels are all the way down at the bottom of the list with Drukhari and uh, Custodes. So I don't know what Games Workshop was thinking with that. I don't know if we're going to get Blood Angels sooner rather than later. I don't know if like maybe they have a uh, detachment for them, but it wasn't quite ready for this data slate. And it'll just kind of come out on its own or be like a white dwarf thing. I don't know, but it was very interesting that Blood Angels, despite having like a less than 45% win rate in competitive tournaments, did not get any points changes. Um, yeah, just a, again, a forest for the trees kind of a hmm, even as a not a, a Blood Angels player. Now, Space Wolves and Thousand Suns also didn't get any uh, changes or updates as far as points go, but they're also in that middle range in between that 45 and 55% win rate, and I think both are actually really close to right on 50, uh, that, you know, it, it sounds like they really didn't need anything. Because uh, the other thing they look at when they look at these win rates, they, Games Workshop, obviously, uh, when Games Workshop is looking at these win rates, they look at, okay, is it like a mono build, right? Is it, there's only three units that everybody takes and it kills everybody and then the rest of the army just doesn't get touched, right? Then they'll adjust points on it, right? You saw that a lot uh, back in ninth edition with Harlequins when Harlequins were just curb stomping everybody. They had a couple of stupid units, the little, um, the Drukhari equivalent of a Viper, right? And they point jacked them big time um, until the army evened out. And so what you could be happening with some of these is that, yeah, their, their win rate is, you know, 50% or whatever, but then when they go and they look at the lists, the lists are all over the place and they're using all the different elements of the army. And so the army is in a really healthy place. 
Um, but yeah, anyways, that, that is one of the ways that they do this. So looking at, of course, our favorite faction, uh, in depth orcs, uh, we got a number of favorable changes and only a couple of increases that frankly were warranted. So really we got away pretty good, pretty, pretty good. First of all, battle wagon went down. What? 160 points for battle wagon went down in price. Can't argue with that. Uh, boom deck of snaz wagon a, again a unit that just doesn't get used enough because it was too expensive it went down hunt a rig went down kill rig went down kill a cans went down custom booster blaster went down mega trap scrap jet not only went down it also finally got its second big shooter the model has two big shooters all of its ninth edition stuff it had two guns and 10th edition suddenly it only had one it finally has two again think gorg uh speaking of thinking gorg or Mork. The Morkanaut has gone down. It is under 300 points. It went from 330 down to 295. That was a huge drop there. Uh, the Rocket Truck Squig Buggy uh, went back down to 100. Shocked Up Dragster came down. Uh, so all of your Speedwa stuff went down. Hmm. Let's maybe paint everything red and go have us some fun. Now, what went up? Knobs went up. I think it's five points. Not bad. Um, knobs are pretty good, pretty versatile, uh, and that's not a, a very big increase, so totally cool there. Squig Hog Boys went up. Frankly, deserved. Those things are OP as hell. That's why I'm building a Squiggy army, because I got tired of my orcs getting blown up by <laughs> by Beast Nagas, you know, those Squig Hogs. So, uh, totally warranted, and really not that bad, considering the power of the unit. 125 points for a squad of those is drop of the bucket. Interestingly, Truck went up. It went up to 65 points. It's still criminally undercosted, so I'm not going to say a thing about that. And that brings us to the final of the three documents that come out with the balanced data slate, and that's the rules commentary. And again, I think this is the most important one to look at, especially for non-tournament players, regular players. The first big thing they talked about is abilities with the same name. We had often thought that abilities with the same name cannot affect units multiple times it, it was the the rule of like hey you could only do this once right um so like if you've got a mech uh healing wounds on uh you know your your morganaut or your gorkanaut you can't have one mech do it and then another mech do it right and then you know they both heal wounds and then they both improve the shooting by plus one and you know now your your ballistic skill is you know hitting on three ups that's not how it works They've now come out and said that abilities with the same name, excluding auras, so it can't be an aura, um, like the war boss one is an aura, right? So it can't be an aura, but if it's an ability that's not an aura, um, you can use the ability twice, but the named condition that comes out of it can only be once. So for example, uh, the example they give is that you're... Um, uh, shooting at a squad with a custom booster blast it's got riveted DACA ability um, and so it, it suppresses the unit it's firing at so you can use two custom booster blasts they can both shoot at a unit and they can both get the uh, um, uh, put the um, like the wounds and the hits and all that but the suppression will only happen once um, so it makes sense. I think that this is going to cause more questions than answers moving forward, though, because both the um, examples that they gave were of friendly units targeting enemy units, right? Which kind of makes sense because, like, oh, I got, you know, a unit of this and I have a second unit of that and they're both going to shoot your one unit of whatever. Of course, both units will get to use the things, but, but they haven't really said anything about friendly things, like the example I just gave about the mech. So... We'll see where that one goes to. Now, another cool one that they did is arriving from strategic reserves in the first battle round. Um, they've straight up said that abilities that allow units to be set up in the reinforcement step of your first, second, or third movement phase treat the current battle round as being one higher. So that means you can't come in turn one because it's going to treat turn one as turn two. It's going to treat turn two as turn three. It's going to treat turn three as turn four. And then it's going to treat turn four as turn four. Makes sense. Orky counting. Uh, but that's actually a really good thing. It prevents those turn one alpha strike shenanigan idiocy things. Usually what happens is uh, you set up with a whole bunch of stuff in reserves. You go second. So 
your opponent is out there with his whole army twiddling his thumbs doing nothing, then you bring everything in, blast him off the board, and Bob's your uncle. This keeps you from doing that. It's a good change. So another fun one that's come out is in the charging section, there's now a charge bonus. So bestowed on a unit that makes a charge move so that until the end of the turn, the unit has fight's first ability. This used to be a thing from way back in the day. Whoever charged always got to fight first. Before that, there was initiative, which is totally different. But yeah, it, it's nice to have this back, and it makes sense. I mean, the unit on the charge coming in should be the one that's fighting first. <laughs> Another really interesting one, and again, this is probably something that a lot of uh, casual games maybe got wrong, is command points gain at the start of the turn. Um, so like the Swarm Lord's Hive Commander ability, uh, that counts toward the one CP gain per battle round. So... That's it. There's only one. They, they are really capping these CPs, people. You can only get one. <laughs> There's also a bunch of rules changes in here for those meta tournament players that were trying to skirt the rules or do things all funky. There's a bunch of clarifications, for example, to hazardous and what happens when you fail a hazardous test. Um, again, they're all in the rules. You can read them. Now, one of those tournament rules change clarifications that's actually going to affect us mere mortals is objective secured and just how objectives work. They've clarified in the rules that before you do victory points, you relook at all objectives and see who controls them. Uh, before, it was just kind of like, oh, it's a sticky objective, it's still mine, whatever the case may be. That's not it anymore. If it was a sticky objective and you got shot off of it or moved off of it and your opponent got there, even though it's the end of the turn instead of the beginning, you still relook at it before scoring the victory points, which is huge. That's fantastic. There's no more of this putting a couple little random units on, sticking objectives, and then like running away with things. Like, no, you need to actually be there holding the objective in order to get the victory points. And that is a really good change. And again, that's something that the meta players were really abusing, but is really going to affect us normal players positively because it's going to make it a lot clearer on how many victory points you're getting because you can look at the board and go, yep, nope, that one's mine. That one's yours. That one's contested. There's our victory points. Another change that is important for us normals is... Uh, transports with bases and really this is the hovering one so looking at you like the impulser and the um uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, the deptus mechanicus one the the cool like backwards landing tank looking thing uh and actually also the eldar uh with the uh the stupid falcon uh and the wave serpent it's a massive model on this tiny little old school flying stand and the rules as written uh, were kind of a, you have to be within three inches of the actual base. Well, when the model is this big and the base is this big, you can't get everybody within three inches just because of like how GW did that. And so now they've changed it that your embark, disembark is within three to five inches of any part of the transport model, not just the base. Uh, because that basing is clearly a um, aesthetic thing, um, because otherwise rhinos just sit on their tracks or trucks just sit on their wheels, right? There's only a few transports that have a base, and those bases really are there to get them up off the ground and make them look cool. So that is a super welcome change. And the last thing in the rules commentary that they changed was command reroll and rapid ingress both got some extra wording clarifications to them. Uh, so command reroll actually names which rolls you can use now. Advanced roll, charge roll, desperate escape test, hazardous test, hit roll, wound roll, damage roll, saving throw, roll to determine the number of attacks made with a weapon. That's it. So before it just kind of like had roll test or saving throw. That was a little too broad. People were rerolling things that maybe they shouldn't be able to. Uh, so that was that was a good change. Just to be, just spell it out and make it clear as day for everybody. So that's it. That's the review of the new balanced data slate and rules commentary. Again, even if you're not a tournament player, if you're not a meta player, you definitely want to take a look at your Munitorium field manual, see what has changed in points, and you definitely want to take a look at the rules commentary because there are changes to how 10th edition actually works for everybody. Now, all that being said, that's going to roll me into part two of this video, which is the updates to the app. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, Warhammer 40k has its own app on the phone uh, that you can use to build army lists, and it's actually a fantastic app. It's funny. Uh, there used to be independent apps back in the day, like Battlescribe, that were way better, and the 40k app was trash, and so everybody used Battlescribe. 
And then the whole thing fell apart with that and the guy like vapor wearing it and just collecting money and all this other stuff. And 40K actually wrote a new app from the ground up that was actually really good and then made it all free and everybody just bloop, migrated over. Now it's not as free as it used to be. It's still free, but if you really want to unlock everything, you have to be a Warhammer Plus member, which honestly, honestly, I think is worth it just for the apps. Like the apps are fantastic. The um, getting into their black library online thing to like read all of the stuff that they have scanned in there. You can go read like the old, the old Imperial armors and indexes and stuff are really cool. And then, you know, the animations and the Warhammer Plus stuff, it's just cherry on top. Really being able to access the app like that and have everything unlocked is totally worth it. What they've announced is in the app now, there are two additional features. So one is called the Command Bunker. It's an in-game companion to give you quicker access to all your forces, data sheets, army rules, attachment rules, enhancements on a single screen. So before what would happen is all the core rules were under the core rule book. All of your uh, detachment rules were in the index. If your codex came out and you bought the codex and scanned your little code, then all of your codex rules would be under the codex. And so you would be like looking at your army list and it would say, you know, yada, 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 do this thing. You'd have to back out of that screen on the app to go into like the core rule book to look up what that was. Now it's, it all just stays on the same screen, which is really, 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 really nice when you're playing a game. I've actually already updated my app and not really played a game, but like sat down and like went through some of the various combinations that I've had to screw with before. Uh, and it's been a lot easier. The other thing they did is they made a favorites tab. So this is where you put all your favorite things that you want to be able to see at a moment's notice. And that is really, really, really cool because you could put anything in the favorites. You could put a data sheet, you could put an army rule, you could put a detachment rule, an enhancement. Basically, if there's anything that you're like, oh my God, I'm always looking for that stupid rule, you can click to add it to your favorites and then it's always right there when you're having a battle and you're like, oh yeah, what was the rule for that thing again? Pfft, bang, find it. You don't have to go digging for it. So it's been really cool how they've been listening to players and updating the app. And that was one thing that I really wanted to talk about as it relates to the rules commentary and the balance data slate that just came out is that they had it come out on the app at the same time. The same day everything dropped, you were able to update the app and all of the points changed and all of the erratas changed, and all of the balance data, it was all changed within the app. So I don't have to look at the app and then go look at a PDF or, you know, pull out my printed piece of paper because I'm an old guy, right? Like, it's already right there. It's already changed. When I go and look at command reroll right now, it is changed to exactly what it's supposed to be. So yeah, again, big fan of the 40K app, big fan of how Games Workshop is really coming along with these balanced data slates, trying to make things even and fair, not just for the meta players, but for us regular people too. And it's been a lot of fun to watch 10th edition kind of evolve and become not as game breaking as 9th edition was. So, you know, gotta give credit where credit's due. All right, that's enough yapping from old Big Mech to your ears for this particular video. I hope you all like the new shirts. I am a huge fan of them. This artwork from Velgarn is just amazing. You're also supporting that uh, independent artists when you purchase these shirts there is a portion of the proceeds from each and every single shirt goes right back to the artist uh, in perpetuity because that is his artwork and even though we have paid him for it that's just how it should work right uh, same thing right with everything we do here we want to support other small artists we want to support the other people in our community that really bring us all the joy uh, so go listen to the goth rockers you know the drill and uh until next time, WAGON!